What does San Francisco, the Lion King, green bean casserole, and baptisms have in common? <sighs> Another episode of Insecure. Hey everyone, this is D, Movie Man, fellow cinephile, popcorn addict, and emerging film critic coming to you with reliable recaps, reviews, and reactions. And of course, I'm coming to you all with another episode of Insecure, Season 5, Episode 3, Pressure. Okay? This episode was directed by Ava Burkowski. She's been the cinematographer for the show since Season 2, and she has also been the cinematographer for several documentaries, TV shows, short films, and plenty of other projects. She also previously directed what many would say was their favorite episode of season four, Loki Happy. The theme of this episode, of course, is pressure, and I think that has a lot to do with how people respond to pressure. Does pressure benefit some people? But then for others, constant pressure and prolonged pressure, it forms a lot of cracks, and eventually everything just shatters and falls apart. And in this episode, we are exploring what that looks like for a couple of people. So we open up at the end of the season premiere where Issa bids Lawrence goodbye as What's the Use by Nick Hakim and Josh Levi plays in the background. And from there, we are following Lawrence's new year. He has officially touched down in San Francisco. And it is safe to say that the man is not just surviving, but thriving. Man, I was staring at that apartment like, oh, <laughs> what is life? Just the entire style of the apartment, the interior decorating, and then that view. And I was just like, one day, one day. So Lawrence's home life, we can say, is looking pretty ideal right now. And at his job, it looks like Lawrence is actually in a position of authority because he has some input in this new smart apparel startup company that's being pitched. And he goes so far as to vouch for the startup because he is impressed by the analytics and the fact that they have traction in the marketplace. And his coworker, or possibly even his supervisor lets him know, okay, boom, it's yours and you can let him know. Simple as that. So it looks like the professional side of things is looking up as well. We then see Lawrence out on a date, but he doesn't have a chance to get too far into it when he receives a text message letting him know that his baby has just been born. So he jumps up and he leaves some money for the meal and he was like, uh, it was nice to meet you, I guess. I don't even know how one even begins to react to that kind of situation. Like imagine being out on a date and then that happens. And then you tell all your friends, yeah, we were getting to know each other, we were having some conversation and then he told me he had just had a baby and dipped. <laughs> so like, doesn't give you a lot of confidence about dating, that's for sure. When he arrives at the hospital, he finds out that Condola had the baby early, so he is officially the father to a newborn son. The nurse even goes so far as to tell him that Condola had very little tearing. I said, ma'am, let's not, please. So Lawrence makes his way into the delivery room where he meets Condola's sister, Kyra, played by Kiki Palmer. I still remember seeing Kiki Palmer for the first time in Barbershop 2, Back to Business. And man, she has definitely had the biggest and craziest run and career from then all the way to now. And it was really nice to see her here as well. For those of you who don't know, she basically tweeted and said that she wanted to be tagged in to beat Condola's behind. But then Issa took her up on that and she ended up becoming Condola's sister. He's also introduced to Condola's mom, Jackie, played by Layla Rashawn. And when I tell you I love, love, love me some Layla Rashawn, I always talk about how in childhood there are just certain actors or actresses that I grew up with well, Layla Rashawn is definitely one of those actresses. From Boomerang, to Waiting to Exhale, to Why the Fools Fall in Love, and several other films as well. But I have always enjoyed her as an actress. I always thought she was beautiful. Definitely had a crush on her when I was younger, and she's still so beautiful now. I think she's a really underrated actress, and I just really hope to see her in more projects. Lastly, Lawrence is officially introduced to his son, Elijah Mustafa, who was named after his grandfather. You can tell Lawrence is like, uh, and then Kyra shoots him a look like, and then Lawrence is like, okay, it's nice. <laughs> like changes his tune pretty quickly. 
He holds his son for the first time. And despite the potential challenges in the future, it looks like the prospects of fatherhood are looking up. Later, Lawrence has a conversation with Chad. Yes, yes, good old problematic Chad. <laughs> And Chad is just telling Lawrence how much Elijah Mustafa reminds him of The Lion King. Not the remake, because I don't F with that. And he ain't lying about that, because a lot of people, you ask them about this remake of The Lion King, nope, <laughs> they are not here for it. All I will say is that I had a chance to go see The Lion King for free. And even up until the time it was released, I just didn't have the best feeling about it. And I literally had two hours before I had to go to the theater didn't have to pay anything and my mom and I talked and we were just like we feel like this is gonna be a waste of time so let's just stay home <laughs> like let's just find something else to do like yeah no and you asked just about anybody who saw that film and they would agree so Lawrence is bothered because he feels like I found out about my son's birth through a text message he didn't get to have any input about what his son's name would be. And he just feels like the family just perceives him as some kind of deadbeat. And see, my question would be, what has your communication been with either Condola or her family from the time that she told you she was pregnant to the time that she had the baby? Because if the answer is goose egg, then I'm a little confused. And then on top of that, when he was told about the pregnancy, his reaction was basically devastation. So I'm unclear on what Condola and her family was supposed to make of you or your role in this child's life when you basically set the precedent long before this baby was born. Later, we see an appointment with the pediatrician that Lawrence and Condola are both present for. We find out that Condola may have been having some issues with breastfeeding and there being a potential milk issue that she didn't communicate with Lawrence. But Condola isn't worried. She's like, hey, I'm on top of it. I also have a fun fact for you guys. The actor portraying the pediatrician in that scene is Jason Liu. He actually wrote this episode and he previously wrote for the episode Loki Trippin' from last season where he also portrayed the flight attendant. And you know, I love behind the scenes stuff like that. Little kind of Easter egg-esque type of things and cameos and details like that. I always feel like that makes the show even more special when they do things like that. Afterwards, Lawrence is just trying to have a conversation with Condola about moving the appointments so that he can be present for them. And for Condola, it's like, well, that's the time that he's usually available, so that's what we have to go with. And then on top of that, he finds out that in regards to his son's baptism, Condola and her family have planned everything out already. So now he is really questioning what his role is going to be in all of this because right now it's not looking too good. But for Condola, she's like, look, keep me posted was your directive. And that doesn't really say a whole lot about parenting. But Lawrence tells her he's not not going to be there. So his plan is to stop through every week. We'll see. We jump forward again where everyone is gathered together to celebrate Elijah's baptism. I was deeply disturbed by that shot of the green bean casserole because why? Everything seems to be fine for the most part, although there is a moment where Lawrence is expressing his desire for Elijah to come stay with him for a week and spend time with his parents. And you can tell that Condola is really not comfortable with the idea. So tell me why when I was looking back on my notes for this episode, I kept seeing $10, $10, $10. I was like, what is $10? I don't remember saying $10. I do some voice texting with some of my notes and basically autocorrect assumed I was trying to say $10 instead of condola. I was just like, not even autocorrect wants this woman's name to be great. So I can understand the frustration from Lawrence to some extent, but I also have to consider that as a new mom, Condola has gone through the process of bonding with this baby by herself, giving birth to this baby, taking care of it. She has this very specific maternal instinct and bond with this baby. You know, it's very isolated also. So then to go from that to, oh, hey, you can take my baby somewhere else for a week, <laughs> you know, and then... So I imagine while it's necessary for the baby to spend time with Lawrence as well, I can imagine it can be a little disruptive to suddenly go from, I see this baby every single day, I feed it, I take care of it, I am the central focus of this baby's life, to then, okay, I won't see you for a week. Yeah. 
not ideal. So later, Lawrence is catching up on work and he gets his reminder to fly out to Los Angeles, but work has been piling up, he is busy, so he lets Condola know that he won't be able to make it. Unfortunately, Kyra and Condola were planning on getting massages and taking some time to relax and hang out, so him doing this has completely disrupted those plans. And Kyra obviously is not happy, and she resents the fact that Lawrence can pop in and out like an uncle instead of an actual dad. We also see Lawrence preparing for his son's visit and, you know, he is putting together the crib and he is baby proofing his apartment. He is just really getting things together so that his son will be comfortable. And as he's doing that, he has a brief conversation through text with Condola and they decide to attend Derek and Tiffany's birthday party for their daughter, Simone. We find out that that same party is being hosted by Kelly, who is rocking a very lovely power suit, might I say. And she's also matching the guest of honor, Simone, which is even better. Derek feels like Kelly's obsession with his child is unsettling, but hey, free babysitting, so he'll just deal with it. We even have Peppa Pig here. No, not Peppa Pig of popular culture. This is Peppa Pig, and her cousin Tyrell is clearly unfit for the job. He is on his phone, and later he is lighting up at a party full of infants and toddlers. Once again, what kind of low budget hood boogery mess is this? Lawrence sees Kelly and he decides to ask how everyone else is doing. And Kelly says, everyone I associate with is thriving, in abundance, limitless. <laughs> Good answer. Kelly gives a speech about not liking children, but not Simone, for she's an angel among demons. I said, oh no. <laughs> Only Kelly. Condola and Lawrence have a very uncomfortable blowout at the party about Lawrence giving the baby a little piece of carrot. Derek takes Lawrence aside and lets him know that he and Condola's biggest issue is communication. I was like, thank you, Derek. <laughs> and that is a trigger for me because miscommunication, a lack of communication, poor communication, however you want to call it, it is my biggest pet peeve. I despise it. So watching the two of them, I was like, oh, get it out of here. Derek refers to he and Tiffany's situation and the fact that they're a team. And Lawrence feels like, well, that's different. You guys are married. And I'm like, yes, the dynamics are different. But the whole team idea and the whole mindset of like, we're in this together and we have to come together to take care of our child, that has nothing to do with marriage. It is a totally different situation, but you should be willing to come together regardless. Regardless of the tension, all the awkwardness and all that, it's just like, it's about the child. Seriously. And Lawrence just feels like no matter what he does, says, despite his efforts, it's not good enough. Afterwards, we get this really great split screen scene and we are seeing the huge disparity between Lawrence's day-to-day -day life and Condola's day-to-day -day life. And ultimately, Lawrence's life is very carefree. It is enjoyable. He is like having a ball in all aspects of his life. As I said earlier, he has built a very ideal life for himself. On the flip side, Condola's life has taken a massive shift because she is the one who is taking care of Elijah day in and day out. And what I find so interesting about pregnancy and women having babies is that for whatever reason, growing up, I assume that when women got pregnant and when they had babies, it was this very carefree process. Like, I mean, I knew that the labor was difficult and I figured once the baby was born, okay, you know, everything bounces back, you know, their body heals, you know, they adjust to being moms and it's a beautiful, blissful experience. And no, <laughs> it is not that at all. And don't get me wrong, parenting and motherhood specifically, I know it's very rewarding, but my goodness, it's low-key a horror movie. <laughs> I'm just being honest with all the things that I learned and understand now, it's like, I have a lot of admiration for any woman who goes through that process and is making it happen for their children because that is a lot. I mean, we are talking like physical changes. We're talking hormones, your body being stretched out. We're talking about morning sickness and, you know, the baby pushing down on your uterus 
and like all these physical changes, then your body is being ripped open to bring this baby into the world. And then afterwards, they have to stitch you up and then your, your breasts get engorged with milk and even breastfeeding is painful because of the baby's mouth and the teeth and how they latch. And then there's postpartum depression and then there's just you taking care of this child who screams and hollers all day because that's their only mode of communication. And I can't imagine, even in that small piece, just hearing crying and screaming the entire day, despite the fact that you've changed the baby and you've fed the baby, you've done all this, and it's just constant. And I imagine it would probably drive you insane, <laughs> you know? And this is such a small glimpse in this episode of that. And I've seen it in other shows and movies, but man, it was such a reminder of the privilege that I have as a man to, you know, create a baby, but not have to deal with any of that. I can be supportive. I can be there for my wife. I can try to make things easier, but I can't fix anything. I can't carry the burden, so to speak. So for me watching that, it was like, it was rough to see. And I'm glad that they were able to showcase the reality of what it's like for men and what it's like for women when it comes to babies. There's just a lot of physical, emotional, mental trauma that takes place. And unfortunately, I don't think that gets showcased or highlighted enough. I think people understand it, but they really don't understand it. I don't think it's looked at with the kind of concern and care and given the kind of grace that it needs to because that is a lot. And all of this comes to a head in a conversation that Condola and Lawrence have where he has arrived to take his son with him back to San Francisco. But all of a sudden, you know, Condola, she has a lot of fears, a lot of worries, and a lot of anxieties because ultimately she does not trust Lawrence. And so in her mind, it's like, I am the one who's gone through this process alone. I've had my family, but it's just been me. I've made the sacrifice with my body, <laughs> you know. I've made the sacrifice with my time. I've done everything for this child and you've just kind of popped in and you want all these concessions and you want all these considerations. But the problem is Lawrence is not in a position to be there, be there. You know what I'm saying? And I get it. He has cultivated this awesome life for himself, but as a parent, you still have to sacrifice. And sometimes that means giving up the nice apartment, the ideal job, just the ideal life. And I know that sucks to say that, but that's what being a parent is all about. Ultimately, it's not about you. You know, you can be happy. And I do think being mentally and emotionally healthy is good for parenting, you know? So yes, go to therapy and do what you need to do so that you can be a healthy parent. But sometimes that also means in sacrifice, giving up the things that you wanted for yourself, giving up the life that you thought you were going to have and adjusting and compromising that ultimately your child is living its best life. And I'm not being funny when I say that, but literally is living life and life more abundantly. That's the whole point of parenthood. So no, she doesn't feel like Lawrence is in a position to take care of their son at this moment. And of course, that was never gonna go over well. So Lawrence blows up and I can absolutely understand that. You know, I'm trying to give Condola some grace because of her situation, but at the same time, being passive aggressive and being controlling and blocking this man's attempts to be there for his son is not a good look at all. Like it or not, that is the child's father and he is trying to be involved. So please stop blocking every attempt for this man to spend with this child because it goes by really fast. And pretty soon, those early opportunities to bond won't be there anymore. He says, you don't give me a chance. You basically shut me out. And all of this is happening after you blew my life up. I said, so the way sex works, <laughs> it takes two to tango, my friend. And Lawrence concludes that conversation or argument, I should say more accurately, by saying that he will do whatever it takes to get his son with her or without her. 
And I was like, oh, 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 oh. We have jumped somewhere completely different. This is not just co-parenting. This is not just, you know, even some disagreements. This is, I am about to change this dynamic and I'm going to do what's best for me. Not us as co-parents, not what's best for the child, but me and my child, not our child. I was like, oh no. And of course, Condola tells him to get the out of her house. We have a very tense moment when Lawrence is on the plane and they encounter some really rough turbulence. And as soon as I saw that, I immediately thought back to a comment section. It was somewhere. It was either a forum or a YouTube comment. But people were basically saying that from the trailer, that shot of Lawrence on the plane, he looked kind of scared or kind of frightened. And they were wondering if Lawrence might possibly end up in a plane crash and his character might pass. You know, like, people were really like, wait, I wonder if that's going to be what happens. So, no, in the end, that's not what happens. It just ends up being some rough turbulence. But it definitely shakes Lawrence up. And he realizes, like, just how close, you know, he had come to death especially with there being a baby on board and just how easily his son's life, Condola's life would have changed just from that happening. So thankfully everything was okay. Before a second, I was like, oh wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Somebody already called this. So Lawrence makes his way home and he's just sitting there and he is staring at his son's crib. He decides to call Condola and apologize, but he also realizes that their situation, their dynamic, their co-parenting is not working. And Condola agrees, this isn't working. Cut to black. And that closes out episode three, Pressure. Okay? I am not gonna lie to you. This episode was pretty depressing. And I really do have a lot of respect for all the parents out there, single, in marriage, in some kind of commitment or relationship, and are making it happen for your children. Kudos to you because that is a thankless job and it is not easy. Like I said, it can be very rewarding, but you have to go through a whole lot to even get to a point where you're like, oh, yes, I am in a good space and I feel like I'm a great parent. I've done a good job. Look, <laughs> kudos to you guys. The only thing I'm going to say about Condola and Lawrence is that I feel like ultimately they both take the L. <laughs> in this situation because the communication is horrible, the co-parenting is not there, and they both are kind of contributing to this very toxic, messed up dynamic. And yes, I totally understand that Condola set the precedent by saying you can be as involved or not as involved as you want. I know why she said it, but we have to set the precedent early on for how this is gonna go. Or at least say like, we need to sit down and discuss like what this is going to look like and how this is going to impact our lives. And the fact that that never happened, I was just like, both of you guys are responsible for that conversation not happening. But then Lawrence just kind of like, you know, completely ignoring the fact that you have this baby that's going to be born at some point. I was just like, really? And also, I don't like that Condola, now that Lawrence is trying, I'm not saying it's ideal, but now that this man is trying to be there for his child, I feel like it's also in her best interest to at least concede a little bit, if not just for her son and her son knowing his father, but then just for herself. You need a moment to just get away and relax and not just be stuck in this zone with this child screaming and crying. Like you need self-care, you know, you need to like take care of yourself. But overall, there are no winners in this situation. I feel like Condola and Lawrence are contributing to the situation and they have created a really messed up dynamic. And I'm really hoping that with the ending of this episode, they're going to find a way to come together and figure it out. I want to see things work for their son because that's who it's about. I know I have reinforced that a lot in this video, but it's true. So no, it's not working. Y'all need to get it together. And I hope you do. So once again, this is D Movie Man signing off. And I'll see you with the movie. Thank you.